Hello, my name is Robert Hudson, and I'll be your Qigong instructor today. Let's start with the term Qigong. Qi can be translated in quite uh, numerous numbers of ways. For instance, in its most basic description, we call it life force, or the energy that pervades the body and all things around us. Gong refers to work, like um, a farmer tilling the ground and producing um, food. So it's work, but it's work that has a, a very great and righteous benefit. So Qigong is thought to mean um, a very positive, righteous, energetic work. Now, when we speak of energetic, there's lots again, as I mentioned, there's lots of ways of interpreting that term. Let's put it this way today for a beginning class in this particular set of Asian classical exercise. When we connect the mind or one's intentions, one's will, with the body and the breath, when these three, there are others, but these are your primary things, so body, mind, and breath, when they are connected, this creates a interconnection. It's like plugging a light into a light switch. All of a sudden, the light will come on, and that's a type of energy. So it is in Qigong, when the mind and the body and the breath are synchronous, unified, moving in concert together in a unified manner, in a coordinated way, you get an increase of flow of your own natural energy. From a Western point of view, we might say that we, by doing so, develop a mind-body relationship. And we begin to experience healthful benefits. One of the first out the gate would be calmness, a feeling of being centered and grounded, and sort of in a place where you feel that everything is right with the world, you might say. Another is vitality, and that's a big one with Qigong practitioners, where you feel energetic, you feel that the things that you need to do in your life, you have the energy to do. You wake up refreshed, you go to sleep and have a deep sound sleep, food digests well, thoughts transform from a positive thought to another, and so it goes. That's the vitality aspect. Not only vitality and calmness, but also increased immunity or health. By unifying these different forces, it's held that one's longevity, one's health, increases. One's immune response increases. There's been studies done with Qigong on things like blood pressure, insomnia, ulcers, female gynecological issues with pain, maybe, and uh, discomfort on a monthly cycle. We find that, again, in a very general sense, one's health is increased, one's vitality is increased, and one's sense of being right with the world is increased. And it's these things that give Qigong its personality, its value, and its use. Qigong has been practiced in, the, in Asian cultures for millennia. It's practiced by everybody from the most, the youngest person, maybe to the oldest, a person who's uh, maybe in the military or the government or science or doctors to maybe a, a simple farmer or maybe somebody who simply um, writes books or works with others in school. It doesn't matter what profession, what lifestyle. In Asia, everybody practices Qigong at some point in their life. 
Just as we would think in America of doing basic calisthenics, jumping jacks, push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, a good walk or a run. These kinds of exercises are the hallmark of our society. In Asia, Qigong is the hallmark of their society. Within Qigong, there is two fundamental descriptions of its nature. One is external, meaning its, its concern is with body movements and body mechanics and things of this nature to produce a particular result. The other half is internal, where one is learning to sit still, like in meditation, where the work is on the inside, and one is trying to cultivate that kind of aspect of Qigong. Today's Qigong class will definitely be an external type. However, those distinctions between internal and external fade because any work that you do with your Qigong in awareness of your movement and of your breath and of your body and of your intention, that's internal work as well. While you may be doing something rather external in the process, internal cultivation is also taking place. So while those terms are in general indicative of the kinds of ways of practicing Qigong, it's safe to say that in all Qigong, with rare exception, have a balance between an emphasis on that which is external and that which is internal. Today's class is going to start with what is called Zhang Zhong, which simply means standing. And so we'll use the English word standing Qigong. The image that is used a great deal is that of a tree because a tree will be rooted in the ground, and so it's firm, it has a solid base. But that root, that same root, draws water from the earth, draws nutrients from the, the soil that it's in, and this nourishes the tree. Then at the top of the tree we have uh, branches and leaves, and they receive sunlight, and they get nourishment from the sun, and they also get nourishment from the air. And so these trees have an aspect that's above, receiving nourishment and benefit, and that which is below in the earth. And so the above is called Tian, or heaven. And when we speak of heaven, we don't mean it in the religious sense. We just mean that which is above, infinity, all that is around us. And then the roots are Di, Di, meaning earth. So Tian and Di, and this tree is deriving from both of these sources. You and I are human beings, and the word for that is Ren, human. So humans are perched between Tian and Di, between heaven and earth. We're between these two realms, and like trees, we receive nourishment. Theoretically, it's not we obviously don't have roots in our feet, but we greet, we draw nourishment from the ground and we draw nourishment from that which is above through air and sunlight as well. And so this standing like a tree means that we're striving to go back to a simpler action where we're simply standing, trying to just essentially, instead of becoming something, we're trying to be something. Just be would be a good way to put standing. The art of just being. And what that does, surprisingly, is allow the body to do its natural functions without any mental or physical inhibition or actions that inhibit, over and over indulge, underindulge, too much, too little of anything which can wear the body's energies out. So by standing in a proper posture, we allow the system, like sleep, except we're not asleep, so it's a little different, but like sleep, we're letting the body regenerate itself. The mind calms down, the breath regulates, the energy finds its own natural flow, and natural, normal health is restored. We'll always do Zhang Zhang in the beginning, after each exercise, and at the very end. How long you stand 
depends on you, but we'll do, we'll start with one minute in the beginning and at the end in about 15 to 20 seconds between exercises. So we're going to practice Zhang Zhong today. And since I spoke of Tian, we're going to practice bringing down Tian, bring down heaven. And I'll discuss that in a moment. We're going to, the torso, as we know, contains all the organs. And in Chinese, it's referred to as the San Jiao, or the three layers, upper layer of the, of the torso, middle layer, and lower layer. And these three are thought to have their own particular functions in Asian medicine and in Asian thinking. So by doing a certain kind of action, we are in, in principle regulating this triple burner, this San Jiao, and that's very helpful. We will open and relax the spine by rotation, moving in a rotational manner, allowing the spine to be massaged and stretched, allowing a natural flow to occur in the spine. And we'll open the hips a little, and we'll open the knees. At the end of those exercises, we'll close with the standing. So let us start with the standing to begin with. The idea is your feet are pointed forward. Don't let your feet be pointed out or in. Point them straight out. And the way you do that is you put one foot in the center of the other, rotate the ball of the foot, and then step up even. So you'll have your own shoe size your own foot size, distance between your feet. Still, you want your toes to be pointed forward. You don't want them to be angled. And the reason they're angling, conceivably, is because maybe there is some tightness in your hips, or in your knees, or in your, your leg muscles, or in some manner, maybe even up in the stomach region. These muscles can cause the leg to turn. So you're standing with one leg rotated without even knowing you're doing it. So going ahead and just standing with the legs and the feet pointed forward is a significant benefit to you. Lock and unlock the knees. Don't bend them deep and don't lock them. Unlock, lock, and unlock. So they're just unlocked. This allows the blood to circulate and the energy to circulate through your legs without inhibition. Next we have a tailbone, right? Take it and you now we have a Cossack tailbone at the end. Point that by pulling your hips forward and that sort of like points the tailbone down. And the idea is, you know, our spine does an S shape. So we're not going to be able to stop that natural S shape. It's natural for our spine. But we want it to be more, a little more straight. So we pull the belt, pelvis forward, pointing the tailbone toward the ground. And you lightly, just gently, you don't want to tighten your tummy muscles, but just gently pull them in a little. And this helps to stabilize the pelvis forward. Let your shoulders just drop naturally, no inhibition. Try to imagine, if you can, through your own visualization, notice that your ears are over your shoulders. Now here's the part that's going to make this technique what it is. There's a Chinese word like we would pronounce it, we write S-O-N-G. In English, we would say song, like, oh, I, I have heard that song. But this is going to, it can be spelled S-U-N-G. But normally, S-O-N-G is tsong, and what it tsong, and what it refers to is relaxation. But to relax from the, this is where my belly button is, from the belly button to the top of my head, I want to lift up, like imagining a string from the top of lifting. But from my belly button toward my feet, I want there to be a feeling of energy going down. So right here at the middle of your body, you have energy going up, and you have energy going down. This again supports this notion of heaven and earth. And in the act of separating these two like this, this actually allows the organs to sit in the torso comfortably, takes a load off the lungs and the heart, it, it takes a load off the spine, allows the neck to be comfortable and your head to sit comfortably on your neck, on your sp spinal bones, etc. So just imagine from here, just bend your knees and you'll feel from here down, dropping. From here up, lift from the top of your head. It's going to take a little practice to get that sensation of the two going. And you don't strain, you don't push down and lift up. Be gentle about it. Just a little bit of a drop and a little bit of a lift. 
And this is called Zhang, Z-H-A-N-G. I'll spell that again. Z-H-A-N-G. This is, uh, when you're writing Chinese characters in English, it's called Pinyin. Zhuang, Z-H-U-A-N-G. Z-H-U-A-N-G. Zhuang. Zhang Zhuang. Standing. Let your breath flow naturally. When you breathe in our exercises, you'll breathe in through the nose, and you'll exhale out the mouth. In through the nose, and out through the mouth. And let's stand for one moment or two. Okay, our first exercise, as I mentioned, is bring down heaven. Let me describe the move first, and while I do it, and then I'll just do one, and then we'll do one together. So the idea is I bring my hands up to my side, along my side, palms facing up, until they're above my head. And this is with inhalation. Then you imagine you've got like a bowl, you make a bowl with your hands, and it's like with imagination, with visualization and imagination, you imagine and you visualize that you're grasping <clears throat> this Tian energy, excuse me, <clears throat> the Tian Chi, which is all around you. You're gathering it and putting it inside this bowl. And you're going to fill it right here between the eyes. That's called the upper Dan Dian. Dan Dian simply means the center. To the heart, which is the middle Dan Dian. Down to the lower belly, just below your belly button, the lower Dan Dian. Upper, middle, and lower Dan Dian. And so you breathe in, grasp this energy, and fill the upper, the middle, and the lower Dandians with this, this heavenly chi that you're bringing into the body, to these centers. Think of this like if we were to imagine a railroad track. And, you know, you're going to go on railroad track, and then you're going to come to a town. From here it switches and goes that way to the next town, switches and goes to that town. And through these relay stations, we change direction and do different things. We may switch and go to another train as an example, or like a bus service. So these centers are thought to be relay stations where the energy is uh, moved in a particular manner to other spots and purposes within the body. We don't have to know what all that means to practice it and receive the benefit. So here we go. Let's practice. Remember, when you breathe in through your nose and exhale through your mouth, and please go at my speed. Try to follow me. Here we go. After each Qigong exercise, always go back to standing. Let your body recover. So there's not a need to recover like a run or something, but just a better way to put it might be to go ahead and let the benefit occur. Take the time to feel that benefit. Okay. Next exercise is the triple partner, and as I told you, it's the upper, middle, and lower part of the torso. You bring you bring the hands up, palm up, fingers close together, up th up your body. So imagine a center line on your like where your top belly button is and your sternum bone, that being like a center line. Your fingers are on just side on each side of that, and the hands come up to about your collarbone if you can reach up that high. Then they turn palm down and do the same thing the other direction. And this is inhalation on the up, exhalation on the down. And we do this also three times. You ready? Here we go.
fact you're standing. Okay, the next exercise is to relax the, the spine. This is one you'll see in American calisthenics too. Uh, we'll just take our hands and uh, you just let them kind of rotate off your, like you're going to take them and do this kind of motion. So if I turn to my left, my right hand will come to the front of me. When I turn to my right, my left hand will come in front and my right hand will go behind me. And the idea is to rotate so that you're stretching the muscles and rotating the movement within the spinal column, thereby releasing the stuck energy in the Asian medicine can become stuck. It can be not enough of it. It can also be a little bit too much in the spot, which we would think of as pain. And so part of the function of Qigong is to decongest these spots where there's this, this congestion, thereby relieving the pain and restoring the area to, to a more abundant health. So here we go. I'll demonstrate one time, just rotating left and right. And notice I'm looking over my shoulders the breath is just, you don't have to regulate the breath. Are we ready? Let's go ahead and we're going to rotate three times each side. Left, right, left, right, left, right. And come back to the middle. Take a deep breath in, through your nose, out through your mouth. Now put your hands on your hips, put your feet closer together. We're just going to roll, roll the hip. This opens up the hip socket in the hips and also in the, in the uh, leg, where your leg bone connects in the pelvis. It allows that to get kind of rotated and massaged. So it's good for the inside of your leg joint as well as the connection of your spine, your sacrum bone, and your pelvis in general. Even does a little light toning for the lower tummy muscles. So we rotate like this. Okay, let's go ahead. Nice rotation. You'll notice my shoulders are moving, but they're not rolling with it. It's pretty much you're trying to isolate the roll, pretty much with just your hip. You're not trying to roll your shoulders, even though they're going to move something naturally. All right, so let's go back the other way. Next exercise is done on your knees. Now, usually I always like to give an admonishment to this one because sometimes people have pretty bad knee problems. And so you don't want to do an exercise that aggravates or further injures an area. So if, for instance, even if the hips are particularly bad and you cannot rotate, then don't do it. If it's something that's too painful, don't do it. If your spine has some trouble and rotating like this causes you trouble, then you don't do it. You bring your arms up and then down because you have shoulder issues then you don't do it. You can use just one hand. You know, you can modify the exercises accordingly. And I'll talk about that a little more toward the end of the uh, tape. So remember, when in, here's a philosophy I always like to, to teach in my classes. When in doubt, don't. I repeat, when in doubt, don't. So if you're not sure if you can do it or it just feels odd to you or doesn't feel healthy, then don't do it. Just do the ones you can and a little bit over time, it's a slow increase and in benefit as you go. There's no rush in Qigong. So again, feet close together if you can maintain your balance, okay? Put your hands on your knees, balance a little bit on your knees, and rotate them in circles. This also rotates your ankles at the same time, even though we refer to it as a knee exercise. It is also benefiting your ankles. Now let's roll the other way. And come up. Get your foot distance I taught you in the beginning. And go back in. To your stand.
Okay. Now, something I want to mention to you is that you can do these sitting. If you happen to not be feeling well, you can just sit, hands, thighs up, feet firmly on the ground, and you can do what we do in standing in sitting. When you bring down heaven, you can do the same thing from here. If you want to do the show burner, you can do it here. The spinal rotation, you simply just put your hands on your thighs and look over your shoulders and rotate your spine. The hip ones will have to skip and the knee ones will have to skip. But you can do everything else from sitting. So again, the rules are with Qigong, don't practice any exercise that you have a health condition where that could be on some level compromised. The basic way to remember that, if it hurts, then you might want to either do one of two things, reduce the number and even the range. For instance, if you've got an arm that's sore getting all the way up to here, if you can just bring it to here, fill it up a little from here, a little bit less, is fine. So you can either do less or not full range or to reduce the, the, the number like we are doing three or four or whatever. You can even just do one. But the main thing is it's going to be a judgment call on your part in terms of pain. If you have any discomfort that's discomforting, then you shouldn't do that exercise and do the others. Um, you have, this is just tape one, there will be other tapes and there will be other exercises that will be taught. And so it may be that certain ones in these series you won't be able to do, but there will be others you can. All of these exercises will come with an explanation as to their purpose and their benefit. So to sum up today's standing is just an overall health benefit exercise. Sort of like, if I can use one last analogy, think of a river. When a river is left to its own accord, it flows naturally. And we know that and from an environmental or ecological point of view, we know that all rivers ultimately flow to the sea. So that they have a route. We could also say they go downhill. This is what rivers do, and they will always find the least line of resistance to go where they're going to go. They will find their own natural way. That is the way we want to think when we stand. We're not imposing on that river. We're not damming it up. We're not drawing all the water out. We're not changing which direction it goes. When you just stand, and as I'm doing it for sitting, it's like a river being allowed to flow normally without any action taken upon it. And so this produces general well-being. Bringing down heaven fills these three fundamental centers, which are rudimentary to the logic of the body's way of working. You could say that by filling to the upper center, that's a way of clearing the mind, helping thinking and cognizing and I you know thinking of ideas or whatever function health of more healthfully. Heart would be emotion and general sense of connection to the planet and the people around us. So it regulates those sorts of things. And the third one is our lower center to the earth. That's what grounds us to the earth. It makes us feel connected to the ground we're walking on and the environment we're in, where we do not feel disconnected from it. So we're connecting which is above, within ourselves, and that which is below us through this exercise. Again, I mentioned the middle, upper, and the middle and the lower torso has all organs. So much goes on, obviously, inside the torso. <laughs> and so this exercise here, by doing this, is thought to be washing or regulating energetically now, this triple burner. And that, of course, creates health in the whole torso region over time 
is beneficial to your overall health. I mentioned that rotating the spine is very good for relaxing the spine and thereby releasing any undue tension. Same thing goes for the hips and the same thing goes for the knee. So to finish, remember to start with standing a short period of time between each exercise and then stand at the end. And if standing wears you out, then stand less, uh, less time or sit. Well, that concludes today's class. I hope you enjoyed it again. My name is Robert Hudson and there will be further tapes. Have a great and auspicious new year. Have a great day.